Welcome all of you on the occasion of ETAP Digital Innovations Day 2022. My name is Vedan Sona. I am from Lenti SNL, Vadodara, India. I am here to present you my case study titled Dynamic Modeling and Analysis of Generator Stability using ETAP. So, my case study is based on an ETAP model which was prepared on one of the industrial networks in India for a fertilizer plant and we have tried to perform transient stability studies for step loading of the generator in plant generators uh, rated to 2 into 25 megawatt capacity so let me show you one by one about the case study First of all, we will see the introduction and purpose of the study. We will see what are the design inputs used in the study, the different engineering considerations and judgments taken to perform the study, the methodology adopted, and the criteria which is selected for analyzing the stability of the plant, the results in detail, and the conclusion finally along with some acknowledgements and references. Starting with the introduction guys, LNT SNL is a joint venture company of Larson and Tubro Limited based in India and Sargent and Lundy LLC based in USA. This company is pioneer in complete power plant engineering and consultancy services. LNT SNL had contracted with a prestigious EPC firm based in India for conducting power system studies for 2 into 25 megawatt gas turbine generator based captive power plant of a chemical fertilizer facility in India. So we will see the details of the network modeling in ETAP and as part of this contract generator step load response study was performed using the transient stability analysis module of ETAP for the complete distribution network. So for this, the dynamic modeling of GTGs with respect to the automatic voltage regulation and the turbine governor of the GTG was modeled in detail based on the inputs given from the original equipment manufacturer of the GTGs. So let us see the purpose of the study. Purpose of the study is to assess the dynamic impact of loading one GTG which is operating in isolation in multiple steps of load in definite time intervals. So the study involves loading the gas turbine generator in equal steps or in some cases also with unequal steps so that the effect on the overall stability of the plant can be assessed. The study aims to obtain vital information for system stability in terms of generator electrical frequency and terminal voltage throughout the simulation event. Now let us see the design inputs that were considered for preparing the network. All the single line diagrams of the network available for complete modeling of the plant was collected. The input data required for cables, transformers, generators, motors and other loads including the lump load modeling of the motor load as well as the static load in the plant was also collected based on the inputs available from the client. For the dynamic model of the gas turbine generators, the speed governing model and excitation system model was also taken into consideration. We will go into the details of it one by one. And before performing the transient stability analysis for step loading of the generator, the network adequacy was checked with respect to the power flows, the voltage, magnitude at all the buses and the short circuit levels 
at different locations of the plant. So let us see the single line diagram used for modeling. Let me show you a brief overview of the plant. Here we have two utility grid supply to the fertilizer plant network. As we can see here, 10,000 MVA short circuit level. We have two inputs from existing 100 kV switchyard. To we have the grid transformers, which convert this 100 kV voltage level to 22 kV. Further, this 22 kV is taken to a new switch gear at 22 kV through tie feeders. This 22 kV level is then converted into 11 kV generation voltage level using 35 MVA transformers. This 11 kV network directly connected to the in-plant generators which are two in numbers GTG1 and GTG2 each rated 32 megawatts. So this is one of the base case of load flow study which was performed in ETAP where only one generator is in running condition the another generator as you can see the generator circuit breaker is switched off so we have only one source running the essential loads of the plant this particularly is a chemical fertilizer plant so it has a lot of loads so we have modeled all the loads in detail all the load boards are considered however for only one gtg running condition we have considered only those loads that are required to be fed in the critical nature now let me show you the speed governing model so this is the ggov1 turbine governor model which is a standard ieee model it was used to prepare the steam turbine model. The parameters for exact modeling of this was shared by the client and the same data was used to perform the study. Similarly, the exciter or AVR model was also shared by the client, which is IEEE AC8B type model. And the parameters for the same were also given by the client. As these are standard models, this was directly entered into the GTG study case editor under the AVR and the governor tabs, respectively. So these were the inputs. Move on to the engineering considerations. First of all, the 100 kV utility grid is considered out of service, and only one GTG is running in island mode. All the LV loads are modeled as lump loads. These lump loads contain 80% of dynamic loads and 20% of static loads, which means that 80% of the loads are, are the motor loads and they are responsible for contributing to the short circuit during fault conditions. The dynamic loads include motors which are less than 37 kilowatt ratings. This was the criteria suggested by client for modeling the in-plant loads. The GTG impedance, moment of inertia, considered as per GTG OEM data sheet. This was available easily from the client. IEEE AC8B model for exciter was used with, along with the parameter constants and IEEE GGOV1 model was used for governor. Then step loading on GTG was performed on the conservative side, considering the worst case loading. ETAP software version 16.1.0 is used for this analysis. The loads divided in steps are switched at certain time intervals to determine the frequency and voltage profile of the system within the steady state acceptable limits. So we have the steady state frequency variation of plus or minus 5% and voltage variation of plus or minus 10%. So we are using this criteria to determine the stability. Let us see the results of step loading of the isolated GTG. 
these were the different steps in which the generator was loaded one by one first step consists of 2.36 megawatt loading which is performed at two seconds in the simulation time step two similarly is performed after an interval of 15 seconds at 2.48 megawatts similarly total eight steps were performed and the total time duration is 107 seconds the following parameters were plotted as the end of the study which include generator speed generator active power reactive power mechanical power bus voltage and bus frequency especially the bus voltage and bus frequency determine the transient stability so let us see this results in detail so this is the bus voltage graph in ETA. As you can see, initially it was 100% nominal voltage. At the end of the first step, it recovers back to a steady state of 100%. The second step, there is a dip in voltage due to the added load, but it again recovers to quite a good value, just below 100%. Similarly, step 3, step 4, step 5, 6, 7, and 8. As you can see, finally, the voltage has reached to some steady state value, which is above 95%. So, this is a stable condition. Even the transient dip during the step 7 in the magnitude of voltage is almost 95% only. Similarly, we observe the graph of bus frequency. Here, for each step loading, the frequency drops to certain extent and tries to recover back to its original value, 50 Hz. So, as you can see, step 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and the frequency has again reached a steady state value of 100%. This was also plotted in Microsoft Excel to get more accurate results about the performance. Similarly, you observe the graphs of generator electrical power output, that is the active power. You can see at the beginning the loading on the generator was only around 2.5 megawatts. Gradually, step by step, the load on the generator is increasing, and finally, at the end, it reaches a value of around 22-23 megawatts. Similarly, you can observe similar patterns in generator reactive power also. Then, generator mechanical power. In megawatts and similarly in the generator speed which is equivalent to generator electrical frequency as the synchronous speed of the generator is 1500 rpm you can see at the end of the study it is recovering back to the same value so these were the results which were plotted in ETAP finally I must show you the results for the study in detail so here are the results for step one frequency is 99.73 percent at the end of step one and voltage is 99.95 percent which is almost normal similarly for step two it is 99.7 percent frequency 98.79 percent voltage the same results were plotted for all the steps and it was found that at the end of step eight both frequency and voltage are within the acceptable limits. So, the conclusion of this study out of all the step loadings, the minimum steady state voltage observed is 94.69, and the minimum steady state frequency is 99.567. So, it can be concluded that both the voltage and frequency dips under all step loadings are within the acceptable limits. 
and also that there are no changes required in any automatic process delay or there is no need required to change any settings in the relays as the transient response of the generator is within the acceptable limits. The study was performed under the guidance of Mr. Pritam Josh, who is the Assistant General Manager Electrical at LNT SNL, Mr. Parikshit Jajal, the Assistant General Manager Electrical at LNT SNL, and Mrs. Rupal Desai, who is Head of Department Electrical at LNT SNL. I thank all three of them for guiding me to perform this case study. The references used for performing the study are IEC 60034 Part 1, IEEE Standard 421.5 on the dynamic models of the turbine generators and the AVR and exciter models, as well as IEEE Standard 399 on power system analysis tools. Thank you.